Let's take a look at the INA282 bidirectional current shunt monitor, try it out up to 1 amp, and take some measurements with a multimeter as well as an Arduino Uno analog input. I previously experimented with an INA219, which measures voltage and current, and can also calculate power and provide the info over I squared C. But now I want to try the INA282, which just has an analog output that I can directly measure on an analog input on an Arduino. The I squared C sensor is fine if all you need to do is take a casual measurement and just read it digitally, but sometimes it might be preferable if you just have an analog output that you can read exactly when you want, and you also have an option of taking this analog output and running it through an RC filter to hold on to an average reading. So if your load is being powered on and off quickly, like a DC motor being current limited, you can measure an average output voltage representing the average of all this on and off chopping on your load current. The INA282 family, which includes several different parts with different gains, these are bi-directional current shunt monitors, so you have a very small shunt resistor, you put that in series with your load, and the voltage developed across that shunt resistor can be monitored by this current shunt monitor, and you can look at the output voltage and determine what the current is to your load. These can be used for high side or low side current sensing, where you can put this current monitor between your load and positive rail, or between your load and ground. I'm going to be using it in the high side configuration this time. The supply voltage to your load can be minus 14 volts up to plus 80 volts, even though this module can run from 2.7 volts to 18 volts. So with this, we can run this on a 5 volt Arduino and monitor loads with a supply voltage way outside that range. Depending which specific part number you get, you'll have different gains, which give you different sensitivities for your current monitoring. Since I'm using the INA282, which has a gain of 50, what that means is the output voltage is going to be 50 times greater than the input voltage, which is the voltage developed across this current shunt resistor. The way I'm going to use this, hooking it up to an Arduino Uno, I will power it with 5 volts from Arduino, and I'm going to monitor the output on the Arduino's analog input, which can go to a maximum of 5 volts. So that means the maximum voltage I want across this current shunt resistor is 5 volts maximum out divided by a gain of 50, or 100 millivolts across the current shunt resistor. And if I take that voltage across that resistor, divide it by 0 0.1 ohms, the value of the resistor, this means I can measure up to 1 amp in my setup. If we want to measure other currents, we can use different value shunt resistors, or we can use different combinations of VCC and maximum output voltage we allow. We can switch to a different device with different amounts of gain, so we can control all these parameters, but this is the way I've got it set up. We're going to try to get this up and running, measuring a couple of milliamps all the way up to 1 amp. These REF1 and REF2 pins can be configured in different ways to change the behavior of your output signal, depending what you want to accomplish. One way to configure the REF pins is to tie them both to ground for a ground-referenced output, which is what I'm going to be doing. What that means is, when there's no load current, so there's no voltage developed across the sense resistor, you get zero volts out, and as the current increases, the output voltage increases. Another way to configure this is to take both reference pins and tie them both to VCC of the chip. In that case, when there's no current in the load, instead of the output being near zero, it'll be near the positive supply rail. And as you develop more load current, the output moves toward ground. One advantage of using this configuration, where the output actually has a non-zero voltage when there's no load current, if you need to be able to detect and verify that this measurement system is up and running and ready to sense load current before you connect power to the load for some reason, this is better than just having it show zero volts out when there's no load. You can't really detect that this is in operation. By connecting one reference pin to the positive supply and one to ground, 
the output voltage will be halfway through its maximum scale when there's no load current. So that way you can detect positive or negative load currents by looking at how far the output voltage is relative to the midpoint. So that way, as the current through the load changes direction, the output voltage will go above or below the midpoint to reflect this direction of current. With my setup, I have a variable DC supply that I'm using to provide a voltage across a 6 ohm load resistor. So as I change the voltage, I change the amount of current flowing through this resistor. And I can turn that down to a couple of milliamps by turning the voltage way down, or I can increase the voltage until I get around one amp, which is the maximum I want to be able to measure. The INA282 is in series between the load resistor and the positive supply. And then I also have a DMM measuring current between the load resistor and ground just to compare. The module is configured with both the reference pins connected to ground. So that way when there's zero current in my load, there's zero volts out. And as current increases toward one amp, the output voltage increases toward five volts, which I can read on the Arduino Uno's analog input. And at the same time, I'm using another DMM as a voltmeter on the analog input just so I can compare the analog out on this module and then reverse calculate and see if it makes sense for the amount of current that we are measuring. The UNO itself is being powered over USB with 5 volts and I'm using the serial monitor to print out the readings. I'm also using this Arduino's 5 volts to power the module itself and everything has a common ground. Since I'm trying to measure up to 1 amp, I'm not expecting much accuracy down in the couple of milliamp range. Since I'm powering this module from the Arduino supply, if this happens to fluctuate it may impact my output level. And also it's only a 10-bit analog to digital converter. So once we start getting low enough currents where we're down in the low millivolt range, one bit change on a 10-bit ADC represents 4.88 millivolts of voltage change. So when we're measuring just a couple of milliamps and a few tens of millivolts across this resistor, if we want better accuracy we should probably use more than a 10-bit ADC. I just want to get it up and running and I really only care about higher currents like tens of milliamps onward to one amp. I put together a little sketch to do the measurements. So the gain of this unit is 50. The sense resistor is 0 0.1 ohms. So for the output of this sensor, I'm calculating the sensitivity is the sense resistor 0.1 ohms times 1 milliamp times the gain of 50 which means when I have one milliamp flowing through a 0.1 ohm resistor and an amplifier with a gain of 50, I'm going to have 5 millivolts or 0.005 volts per milliamp. Then in the main loop over and over, I print out the current that I measure from a function and wait one second and keep taking readings. To measure the current, I'm also taking an average of 100 samples and part of this involves reading the actual 5 volt VCC voltage on the Arduino board. So instead of just assuming 5 volts, I'm taking an accurate reading as best I can. So I'm taking the average of 100 analog input readings and 100 calculations of VCC, and I found that gives me a more stable reading than just doing individual readings. The function to actually read VCC from the Arduino I found somewhere on the internet, so this is just copy and paste, but it uses the internal 1.1 volt reference voltage to measure VCC and return what the actual 5 volt value is. So we calculate what the actual analog voltage is based on the analog reading out of 1024. And we know how many volts per milliamp the sensor is sending us. We calculate the current in milliamps, then we just print everything out. So let's go take a look at this in action. Here's the test setup with the current sense module right here. The Arduino reading on the 10-bit ADC. A 6 ohm 100 watt power resistor mounted on a little metal clip in case it gets too warm. A power supply that I'm only going to use up to 1 amp. I have a current meter right here, currently at 3 to 4 milliamps. And then here I have a voltage meter across the output of the sensor 
which is the same as the input to the ADC, just so we can do some calculations and double check what we're seeing. With the current meter showing about 3 milliamps, and Arduino showing anywhere from 0 to possibly up to 3 milliamps, the actual voltage going to the ADC, 0 0.023, let's say, 7 volts, divide that by the gain on the sensor of 50, so this is the voltage that should be on the sense resistor of the module. So now divide that by 0.1 ohms for the sense resistor, and the sensor should be actually measuring 4.7 milliamps according to its voltage. So that's off from the current measurement on the multimeter. Now I increased the voltage on my test load, so I'm drawing now between 14 and 15 milliamps. Arduino is measuring between 11 and 13 milliamps. The actual voltage on the sensor, 78 millivolts divided by the gain of 50 sense resistor voltage divided by sense resistor, 15.6 milliamps. So as we increase our load current and our voltage drop across our sense resistor, the output of the sensor appears to be getting a little more accurate toward the real current, but the Arduino is still behind a couple of milliamps. So I'm just going to increase up to around 300 milliamps, 1.485 volts divided by gain of 50 voltage on the sense resistor divided by the sense resistor. So the sensor is telling us 297 milliamps. The DMM says 300 or 301 milliamps. And Arduino is 297 to 298 milliamps at the moment. The ADC is actually calculating a bit better right now. Let's just go for it. So I put it about 1 amp, 999 milliamps, and the output of the sensor is 4.95 volts, and we can only do 5 volts on the ADC, so this is our maximum current reading the way we are set up with our sense resistor. 4.953 volts divided by gain 50, voltage on the resistor divided by the resistor, so that calculates to 991 milliamps. Arduino is showing just over 1 amp. So overall, considering we're using just a 10-bit ADC with no precision reference to give us better accuracy, looking for measurements in the range of tens of milliamps up to 1 amp, this does a reasonable job if all we're really trying to do is not make a digital multimeter, but get an idea where we're at, depending on your application for the current sensor. This type of setup with a basic Arduino may be all you need. And if we want to get even more accurate readings, maybe we can use more accurate voltage references both on this module itself and on the ADC that we are reading the sensor into. Maybe we can use more than 10-bit resolution. Maybe even give this module its own dedicated cleaner power supply. Anything to help stabilize the readings, make everything more accurate or reliable. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next video.